The BYU football program has announced future schedule opponents in SMU and Weber State. What does the SMU series really hold, and what might it portend for BYU in 2024 and beyond with regards to their Big 12 schedule? We're talking about that as well as, well as what the future for the Big 12 as a conference looks like scheduling-wise. It's all ahead on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Everybody, I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. By way of introduction, once again, this is your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU, particularly focusing on football and basketball. We cover it all on this podcast. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the promo code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. We'll tell you a little bit more about Game Time as today's show progresses. But I want to dive in on today's podcast and talk some scheduling uh, for the BYU football program. They made the announcement Monday afternoon that the Cougars have two future scheduling agreements in place, uh, one of which uh, involving the SMU Mustangs. Now, uh, traditionally, I would have looked at this and said, okay, eh, whatever. But this actually does hold some intrigue because SMU, as many of you might recall, in the craziness that is conference realignment, the SMU Mustangs next year are going to be an ACC member, just like Stanford and Cal, the SMU Mustangs are going to make the American, uh, not the American, the uh, the Atlantic Coast Conference is going to stretch from the Atlantic Coast to the Pacific Coast with a pit stop in uh, what are the what is it is a Highland Park uh, just inside of the Dallas uh, suburbs uh, down there in Texas where SMU is located, and they will be an ACC member. Now, uh, the one thing that I like about this is that this does fulfill a Big Twelve requirement for the BYU football program that requires them to play a a power five uh, member in their non-conference schedule. Now, who else are they playing in 2024? Well, it's a real nothing burger. I feel like in many respects, you will have a season opener against the Southern Illinois Salukis at Lavelle Edwards Stadium on Saturday, August 31st. And then BYU will play at Wyoming. Yes, the Wyoming Cowboys, the Cougars are making the trip back to Laramie uh, for the first time in seemingly forever since they were in the Mountain West Conference. Conference, they will have to head up there on September 14th. Now, BYU did have a non-conference game scheduled against the University of Utah to resume the Holy War series when they were an independent before they joined the Big 12 Conference for September 7th. You look at SMU schedule. Well, the SMU Mustangs happen to have an opening on, you guessed it, September 7th, 2024. Now, the announcement from BYU does not indicate that that is the firm date that the game will be played, but it seems very natural that you move BYU and Utah out of that slot with both of them going to be members of the Big 12 Conference, probably move that to Thanksgiving weekend, uh, rivalry weekend at the end of the season, and then you insert BYU heading to SMU in that slot. Yes, BYU will open this series on the road down there in Dallas, Texas at Gerald uh, Gerald J. Ford Stadium. Uh, Looking forward to that. I think it should be an intriguing matchup. Obviously, there's going to be a whole lot of excitement from SMU side of things, being a member of the Power Five. Remember, this was a program in the late 80s that uh, Pony Excess, as many as many of you might recall, the only college football program to have ever received the death penalty, shut down the program for two years, if I'm not mistaken, and they have climbed there all the way back up, and now they're going to be a member of the Power Five. They originally were members of the Southwest Conference back in that back in its heyday, but looking forward to this. Uh, There will be a return trip from SMU uh, being paid to Provo, Utah in 2027. Uh, No date has been set on that one, but uh, you can assume it'll be probably in the early part of the season uh, for BYU. But 2027 is also the other part of the scheduling announcement that BYU made is that the Cougars are going to open up the 2027 and 2030 seasons against in-state FCS foe Weber State. Uh, The Cougars uh, and the Wildcats will rematch in that one. 
looking forward to this. I, I'm of the opinion that uh, you let many of you know, if you don't at this point, you, you haven't been listening long enough, that I am no fan of the FCS games. I just don't think they're necessarily worth people's time. If it were up to me, you could play FCS games, but when would you play them? I would actually play them in the spring. I would make it so at the end of spring ball for each of these Division I FBS programs that you can play an FCS opponent at the end of spring ball, essentially as a uh, cap. Uh, it's your spring game. And it's a legit spring game because you're playing an opposing team and it gives you a chance to really uh, uh, see how your guys have progressed through a month's worth of camp. Now, I know that's a far cry uh, from ever really happening, but nonetheless, if you're going to play an FCS game, in my opinion, for BYU, make it a regional game, whether that's Southern Utah, Utah Tech, or in this case, Weber State. And I even would uh, say that I'm okay with Idaho State as well, uh, playing BYU as that FCS opponent. I don't want the likes of Wagner and Savannah State and some of those far flung FCS programs that have made the trip to BYU in the past. Give me a local team with some local names I'm going to recognize, even though it's a body bag game and BYU's paying them a check to have them come in and let BYU beat up on them. But nonetheless, Weber State will make the trip uh, to Provo in 2027. Uh, that is going to be interesting because now you know two of the non-conference games for BYU in the 2027 season. What does that hold for the rest of the schedule in 2027? It's anybody's guess. That's the thing about this is BYU had to cancel so many series uh, when it came to exiting independence and going into the Big 12 Conference, there was always looking at it and saying, okay, what are they going to cancel? What series are they going to be able to uh, wriggle the way out of? Will they restructure some of these? That's the biggest thing for BYU is you look at the schedules and – they're going to be very judicious in how they schedule this. There's a reason why they picked SMU because SMU is not going to be a world beater next season in the first year of uh, playing at the Power 5 level in the ACC. Yes, there'll be a whole lot of excitement, but uh, I think you can just look at the other three newcomers to the Big 12 Conference this year, uh, speaking of Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF, and look at the fact that they are 1-14 in 14 in Big 12 Conference play right now, and that should give you some indication of what SMU is probably up against as they make the leap to the Power five level. So uh, I think it's a solid addition to the schedule for BYU. It's very much a winnable game on the road down there in Dallas. As I said, there'll be plenty of excitement on the part of SMU, but uh, the nice part is 2027 and 2030. You already know what your season openers are going to be for the Cougars. Uh, September 4th, 2027, Weber State comes to town. And then August 31st, 2030, uh, the Cougars are welcoming Weber State once again uh, to Provo. So uh, all things considered, I think it's a pretty solid schedule. I think there's two intriguing road trips in the non-conference slate next year for BYU. And lest any of you be worried, saying, well, Jake, are they only going to play five home games next year? No, because the unbalanced uh, nature of the nine-game conference schedule in the Big 12, this this year, BYU played four home conference games. They're playing five of them on the road. Well, next year it flips. You have five home conference games and you play four on the road. I would assume that uh, Utah would absolutely uh, argue and beg and scream, cry, do whatever they have to do to make sure that BYU makes the trip to Salt Lake City as was scheduled uh, in the in the previous agreement between the two schools next year in conference play, but I'm okay with that. The nice part is BYU will have five conference games at home, and seeing as BYU is yet to win a conference road game, that's advantageous for the Cougars. So yes, the only non-conference home game next year is your FCS game. The other two uh, will be a trip to Dallas to take on SMU, and the other will be uh, making the trip up I-80 to watch uh, the Cougars and the Cowboys, speaking of Wyoming, uh, renew acquaintances, uh, longtime rivals, obviously. And you know that Wyoming fans absolutely love BYU fans. Let me tell you about that. Uh, no, nonetheless, uh, I'm actually planning to make that trip uh, to Wyoming. I'm probably just going to drive out to it. Uh, I, there's just like this, uh, I don't know, nostalgia factor to that series. Uh, very much would like to make the trip uh, to SMU. Many of you know that uh, I, I self-fund a lot of my trips, and obviously, uh, it's be, thanks to you guys' support, I'm capable of doing that. So uh, kind of already kind of planning out and looking forward to seeing what the future schedule for BYU is going to be. I'm hopeful that they will do what the ACC did yesterday and announce essentially the 2024 through 2030 uh, conference schedules. Now, you don't necessarily have dates, but you'll know the opponents for BYU in the new uh, era of the Big 12 Conference. 16 teams, there's going to be some scheduling that's a little quirky. I'm sure they will absolutely work it in because they've, they've already said that the ACC, uh, they will. every member of the 17-team ACC is going to play each conference member at least twice in a rolling, I think, seven-year period. Uh, you can probably make it into a six-year period, speaking of the Big 12, and uh, looking forward to that. Now, uh, what does that hold? What does the future hold for the Big 12 in conference uh, scheduling? I had a conversation with somebody yesterday about this as we were kind of going back and forth 
on how things looked for BYU on that schedule in 2024 and uh, what things are going to look like uh, in 2024 and beyond. I'm going to share that with you guys. I guess some inside intel, as it were, uh, coming up here momentarily. Now, a word real quick on our friends over at Game Time. Now, and many of you out there like going to sporting events, whether it's BYU basketball, BYU football, Utah jazz games. Uh, you like going to theater, comedy, uh, music uh, concerts. No matter what you're into, Game Time has got the tickets for you guys. Uh, Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. And with killer last-minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guaranteed, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying your tickets. The best part of that, about it is it's all done inside the comfort of their easy to use app uh, you can see exactly what the view from your seats is going to be they have a best price guarantee and if uh, you get to me the game time guarantee means you always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference more than what you would have originally paid they'll give to you because they guarantee uh, they are going to give you the best price so download the game time app today create an account and use the promo code locked on college for 20 dollars off your first order uh, terms apply again create that account and redeem the the code promo code locked on college that's l o c k e d o n c o l l e g e for twenty dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at uccu the learn and earn uh, ucc mobile banking app is an app that's paying your entire family to learn about money all of us uh, want to be smarter when it comes to our finances and obviously not all of us are geniuses and studied economics and the like in college. That's where UCCU and Learn and Earn comes into the fray. They have broken down financial topics into fun bite-sized educational games like quizzes and trivia. And more importantly, every time a family member or yourself completes a topic, you earn points that accrue and can be redeemed for gift cards to stores like Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and many, many more. There's age-appropriate content for every member of the family who can compete against one another and track your progress on leaderboards as well. Learn and Earn is available inside the UCCU mobile bank Banking app. So play it anytime, anywhere. And of course, the more you play, the more you learn. And the more you learn, the more you earn. Learn and earn. Part of UCC's award winning B Money Smart Youth Banking System, uh, helping kids, teens, and parents have fun while becoming more financially literate together. It's all courtesy of Utah Community Credit Union. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you for being everydayers with us right here on the podcast. All right, I've got one final pair of tickets to BYU's exhibition opener tomorrow at the Marriott Center for the men's basketball program as they take on Life Pacific. Uh, by the way, I just learned that uh, Life Pacific is out of San Dimas, California. San Dimas football rules. Uh, if you know that movie reference, uh, uh, that's, that's going to be the contest right now. You want to win a pair of tickets uh, to go see uh, BYU and Life Pacific play uh, basketball tomorrow night at the Marriott Center. I've got a pair of tickets with your names. If you can name the first person to respond to me via email with the name of the movie that uses that phrase, San Dimas football rules. You will be on your way to watch BYU and Life Pacific play basketball tomorrow night at the Marriott Center. Shouldn't be a hard one uh, to figure out, but nonetheless, first person locked on BYU at gmail.com with the correct uh, movie title. Uh, you will be on your way to watch BYU basketball tomorrow night. All right. Uh, as I mentioned, I had a conversation with a friend. Uh, I consider a friend, I guess, a, a acquaintance, whatever you want, a colleague, uh, as it were. Uh, we were talking yesterday about the scheduling agreement for BYU. And we kind of got onto the topic of what the future of the Big 12 schedule is going to look like because it's going to be a whole new look next year uh, for the Big 12 Conference. Obviously, Texas and Oklahoma take off for the SEC. You add the newcomers in Utah, Arizona, Arizona State, and Colorado to the mix, and it's going to be a 16-team league that stretches from the East Coast all the way uh, to the Mountain Time Zone, and in the case of the Arizona schools, half the year they're essentially in the Pacific Time Zone. So it's a big conference. It's very stratified, and it is very spread out. So what is the scheduling philosophy going to look like for the Big 12? Well, uh, having this conversation yesterday, uh, I'm not necessarily breaking any uh, huge news, I feel like, but I can tell you this much. Uh, the word that uh, me and my colleague are hearing, uh, and I confirmed this after talking to some other people, after this conversation is that the big 12 plans to uh, keep it more regionally scheduled as, as of now, now this could all go up in smoke. It can, can be completely changed on a dime. It feels like Brett, your mark uh, gets one idea and he, he's like, you know what? That's, that's genius. We're going to go with that. And he could change all of this. That absolutely could happen. 
But the way I understand it is that you can expect that BYU and Utah will play annually uh, when it comes to the conference uh, schedule. They obviously want these uh, strong rivalries to be part of this conference. I, I would expect you'll see the battle for the Sunflower State between the Kansas schools. I think you'll see Farmageddon. I think you'll see a buildup of rivalries with some of the newcomers in the conference, uh, et cetera. But BYU and Utah, the Holy War, as well as the Territorial Cup down in Arizona between the Arizona schools, I would expect those are annual additions on Thanksgiving weekend as they should be. It just seems absolutely natural. But the bigger news to me, is, as I understand it, is that the Big 12 Conference is planning to go more with, uh, I guess, regional scheduling. And what that means is you can expect to see a lot more matchups between BYU and Utah, uh, BYU, Arizona, BYU, Arizona State, BYU, Colorado, and the like. Texas Tech, I think, would be actually be a very natural addition. Them being in West Texas and uh, being fairly close in proximity to the Arizona and Utah schools as well as Colorado. Uh, think of it this way. You're going to see uh, more of those quote-unquote rivalry matchups. I'm sure the BYU fans of a certain age, you have to be a little older uh, to remember the Arizona schools and BYU and Utah in the whack together before the Arizona schools left in the, was it the late 60s, early 70s to make the leap to what was then the Pac-10. Uh, but they had some good uh, battles back and forth. Arizona State was the dominant force. And when they exited the WAC, the Western Athletic Conference, it actually allowed for the rise of BYU to run that conference for many, many years. So, I'm expecting uh, that to be uh, some of the philosophy. Now, you'll still see BYU traveling to the likes of UCF and Cincinnati and West Virginia going to Houston. You'll, you'll see those games, but I think it's going to be on more of a rolling basis. What I mean by that is if you look at how big these big conferences, the 18-team Big Ten, the 17-team American, uh, not the American, the ACC, the a a a Atlantic, uh, the Atlantic Coast Conference, the ACC, just say ACC, Jake, but nonetheless, uh, you're seeing them essentially set up a schedule where you do have some set uh, opponents you're going to see annually, uh, rivalries as it were, but then you're going to rotate through opponents home and away in a certain time period to make sure that you don't uh, miss uh, certain teams for years on end. There have been uh, games in the SEC, even before it's gone to the 16 teams that will be next year, that have not seen each other for five and six and seven years just due to their previous scheduling uh, philosophy. That will not be the case in the Big 12 as I understand it. But expect to see Colorado, Utah, Arizona, Arizona State, Texas Tech. I would assume that Oklahoma State, the Kansas schools will be fairly regular on BYU's schedule. The other programs in the in the group, Cincinnati, UCF, Houston, uh, West Virginia, and the like, those will be a little rarer uh, for you to see on the schedule. Now, like I said, could that change tomorrow? Absolutely. But the conversations I had yesterday is that that's kind of what it's going to look like. And I actually, I, I'm all in favor of that. I'd love to see uh, trips for BYU to Boulder and going to Tucson and uh, Tempe, going to Salt Lake City and uh, vice versa, going to Lubbock, make it more regional and have these rivalries build up, make it the Western contingent and almost an Eastern contingent of this conference. And whoever is top dog in the conference, the top two of dogs, I guess I should say in the conference, then they do battle in Arlington, Texas for the right to be the big 12 champion. Now, like I said, you'll see each other on a fairly regular basis. I know that a number of Cougar fans are very much looking forward to BYU's first ever trip to play UCF in big 12 play because you know, what's in Orlando. Oh yes. Disney world. It's a really, really fun place. And a lot of people, uh, affiliated with BYU love going to Disney World and I'm not absolving myself I'm I'm married into a uh, I'm married to a woman who is an absolute Disney fanatic and I enjoy Disneyland myself so uh well, Disney World, I guess, in this case, but that's kind of what the philosophy is going to be, as I understand it right now. I, I don't proclaim to be some insider when it comes to the scheduling philosophy philosophy for the Big 12. I will cede that crown to others who like to uh, pick it up and run with it. But nonetheless, uh, that's what I'm hearing on the Big 12 front. So uh, there you go. All right. Uh, we will wrap up today's show. I've got a number of notes on other BYU sports, including a huge uh Second half for BYU soccer. If you did not see this in the Big 12 championships, uh, BYU women's soccer made an absolute statement in their first round matchup against the Oklahoma Sooners. We'll break all that down and some other BYU news of other BYU sports here in just a moment. 
A quick word on our friends over at FanDuel, though, before we get to that. And, of course, FanDuel is here to help you guys out have some fun uh, this NFL season. The best part is they are America's number one sports book, and they want you guys to snap into action with the NFL this season. Right now, new customers, you get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. Simple as that. You pick a team to win, they win, you get $150. Bucks. It's simple as that. It's $150 bucks if your team wins. You've been thinking about joining FanDuel. Now is the perfect time to get on it. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and many, many more. And of course, uh, they want to make it as easy as possible for you guys. And they also have daily specials as well. Uh, they may one day say, you know what, here's your opportunity to uh, bet on this and make this amount of, it's just, it's really, really simple. The best part is FanDuel wants to make it so you guys have a fun time uh, with uh, them playing on, on their on their platform, on their app. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season in style. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on once again FanDuel an official partner of the NFL today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at Perry Homes Perry Homes one of our great local sponsors and of course my friends if you're looking for your first home or ready to upgrade to your dream home Perry Homes has a house for you and by the way anything in between those two uh, scenarios they've got the options for you for 50 years Perry Homes has been Utah's premier home builder with communities throughout the state they have many communities Home designs and price points all designed to meet your needs as a homeowner. They have beautiful communities in Davis, Salt Lake, Tooele, and Utah counties. They even have multiple communities in Washington County near St. George as well. If you want to live in Red Rock country, get on it now. They offer over 50 unique home designs from Ramblers to two stories to townhomes. And of course, in this uh, crazy inflationary uh, market, they're offering generous financing incentives to their preferred lender as well. So get on it today, my friends. Visit PerryHomesUtah.com to see what's new in Utah's finest neighborhoods. That's Perry Homes. Homes Utah, P E R R Y, Perry Homes Utah.com to learn more now. For 50 years, Utah has been coming home to Perry Homes. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars a part of your day. Hope you have a fantastic Tuesday. Whenever you hear this, uh, by the way, coming up on Friday, make sure you check out the Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. It'll be available uh, live on YouTube at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. Goes for an hour, covering all the big storylines going into week 10 of the college football season. So uh, check that out on YouTube on Friday morning or catch the podcast version of it uh, that's posted shortly thereafter. All right, a couple of notes uh, before we go on today's show. Uh, we already talked about BYU and their scheduling announcement, but uh, BYU women's soccer, folks, was absolutely rolling. The number seven ranked Cougars, as you would expect, when and they go up against the number 10 seed are supposed to roll the Oklahoma Sooners. Well, they did that, just that. They were up one nothing at halftime, and I tuned in just after halftime, and I was in for a treat. They rolled out five goals in the second half. Absolutely dominant showing uh, for BYU as Bella Felino had a brace in this one. Uh, you also had Olivia Wade Katoa score. Ali Fryer and Aaron Bailey are now uh, co-leaders for BYU in goals on the season with 10 apiece. They've reached double digits uh, with their goals. Ellie Walbrook had her ninth goal of the season. BYU was scoring goals seemingly at will in this game as they crushed Oklahoma and sent the Sooners home uh, for the season. The Cougars advanced and congratulations uh, to Jennifer Rockwood more importantly, she has notched her 450th career win. Now, uh, I, I don't know how many of you are necessarily huge soccer fans, but 450 wins as a soccer head coach, you you, you cannot ignore that. And it just feels like a Coach Rockwood is just getting going. She is the Lavelle Edwards of BYU women's soccer. She has made this program into what it is. It's a national contender year in and year out. And the best part is BYU is competing in the Big 12 in year one. They finished second in the regular season, uh, just lost out on winning their first Big 12 title uh, with Texas Tech taking it by just a, a seemingly a hair. So it's awesome to see BYU women's soccer doing their thing. Congratulations to them. They advance, obviously, in the Big 12 championship. Uh, they'll be obviously playing this week throughout the week, hoping to capture that Big 12 uh, uh, tournament title and advance to the NCAA tournament. A couple other notes here is BYU uh, men's basketball. As I mentioned, they take on Life Pacific tomorrow. If you can, uh, once again, if you want to win those tickets, remember San Dimas High School football rules. Uh, email us locked on BYU at gmail.com. We'll send you out to this game. But BYU uh, plays their First and only exhibition game tomorrow night in the Marriott Center. Life Pacific has already played two games on their season. Funny enough, uh, they uh, defeated Stanton 72-57 to in its season opener last week. They also played Cal State Fullerton in an exhibition on Saturday, uh, losing 96-64 to to the Titans in that one. And then they'll be facing BYU tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Uh, looking forward to this. It's the first opportunity to really see a BYU in action. This will be available on BYU TV and ESPN+. Plus. It's the only BYU 
TV game of the year because it's an exhibition. Uh, the rest of the games, if they're not picked up for network television, they're going to be on ESPN Plus, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, but looking forward to it. Uh, uh, Robbie McCombs uh, from uh, SB Nation and Vanquish the Foe uh, did reveal uh, that BYU over the weekend did have their "Quote unquote secret scrimmage against Stanford. Uh, they uh, beat the Cardinals seventy-seven to seventy-two, according to Robbie Spencer Johnson at eighteen points. Richie Saunders, Trey Stewart, Trevin Nell, and Fusani Traore all also had double-digit points in the win uh, for BYU. They did hold out Dallin Hall and Dawson Baker. They are two players that they're just trying to make sure that they're 100% uh, healthy ahead of the season opener against Houston Christian next Monday night. I wouldn't be surprised to see both of those players miss this game, uh, speaking of the Life Pacific matchup uh, tomorrow. But uh, we'll have more for you guys as that gets a little bit closer. But a uh, solid showing for BYU, all things considered, because Stanford, they're a Pac-12 team, and they've got a proud tradition. So a nice win for the Cougars in that regard. All right. The final note I got for you guys uh, today is uh, I want to say best of luck to Jaron Hall. It was really cool on Sunday. I forgot to note this on our Monday podcast to see three former BYU quarterbacks taking snaps at quarterback in the NFL over the weekend. Zach Wilson, obviously rallying the troops and getting a win uh, to improve to four and three on the season with the New York jets with their 13 to 10 win over the New York Giants. Then you had Taysom Hill running for two touchdowns and taking snaps at quarterback for the New Orleans Saints in their W. And then finally, uh, and it's unfortunate the way it went down because Kirk Cousins did rupture his Achilles tendon. He is done for the season. We saw Jaron Hall take his first career snaps in the NFL in relief of Kirk Cousins in their win over the Green Bay Packers. Funny enough, going up against Utah State quarterback, former Utah State quarterback, Jordan Love. Uh, it was like this welcome to the NFL moment uh, for Jaron. He did have a strip sack. What was it? Three snaps into his uh, play on the field, but he's got a vote of confidence from his head coach. Speaking of Kevin O'Connell, they said that uh, the team our quote, our roster has confidence in Jaron Hall. Who knows if he ends up being the starter for the rest of the season. There's a lot of conjecture out there about what the uh, Vikings are going to do, but you know what? The, all you can ask for if you're Jaron Hall is a chance. And he's been given that opportunity and we'll see how we, he does with it. Hopefully he can pick it up and run with it. And, uh, prove what he's capable of at the NFL level. So there you go. All the news and notes I've got for you guys on a Tuesday edition of the podcast. A huge thank you once again uh, for joining us here on the show. Thank you once again for making it your first listen, as I often say. And thank you for being everydayers with, with us on the podcast as well. Uh, just a quick request, if you have not done so already, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button right below us. Uh, hit the bell notification as well to enable notifications. Or if you're listening to us on the regular podcast feeds, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or the myriad of other podcast catchers out there, uh, please subscribe, uh, especially rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star rating if you don't mind uh, and hook it up and let us know what you like about the show uh, in the comments section as well on Spotify. So thank you once again for your support. Hope you guys have a fantastic Tuesday whenever you hear and or watch us. And of course, we'll be back with you guys again tomorrow. By the way, it's Wednesday. It's time to talk with Connor Pay. What did he make of the Texas game? What does he make of going out to West Virginia for BYU's game this weekend against the Mountaineers? We'll talk about all of that and a whole lot more. And happy Halloween once again to all of you out there in Cougar Nation as well. Enjoy whatever's left of your Halloween holiday. And we'll be with you guys again on a November 1st edition of Locked on Cougars. See ya.